The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft quality foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. When you're hungry for a taste that's rich and satisfying, or your recipes call for a cheese flavor that's really distinctive, here's the name to remember. Pabstet. Yes, Pabstet, the pasteurized processed cheese food that has that real cheddar flavor. That's right, the flavor you get in Pabstet is real cheddar, for it comes exclusively from fine cheddar cheeses of real distinction. You'll taste the difference the minute you taste Pabstet. You can get golden or pimento Pabstead in the handy-sized round package. But after you try it once, you'll want to buy it in the money-saving two-pound loaf. In any package, Pabstead is delicious. Ask for it tomorrow. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. Today, his hometown of Summerfield is getting a preview of spring. And the water commissioner and his secretary are looking out the office window, getting a view of the preview. What a day, Bessie. Yes, sir. Sun shining like mid-July, and here it is only February 22nd. Yes, sir. Washington's birthday. Yeah. Too bad he didn't have a day like this when he crossed the Delaware. <laughs> it's as clear as a bell. Look, Bessie, you can see the bank. Yes, sir. I guess the employees are off today. It's Washington's birthday. I know, Bessie. <laughs> and look way off there to the right, Bessie. It's not often you can see the tack factory. I guess the tack factory is closed, too. It's Washington's birthday. I get the point, Bessie. Let's go through the mail, and you can take the day off. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was hoping you'd give me the day off. Of course, I didn't want to bring it up. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Well, let's see what we have in the morning mail. This looks like a letter from one of our satisfied consumers. Dear Commissioner Gildersleeve, we've intended writing you for some time. Well, because every time our faucet rips, we think of you. <laughs> Hecklers, remind me to answer this sometime, Bessie. I will, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll make a note of it. What's this? Letter from Chicago. Office of the President of the Upstate Association of Businessmen's Clubs. Well. Oh, that was addressed to the Jolly Boys Club, Mr. Gildersleeve, so the postmaster sent it to you. Oh, see. President of the Jolly Boys Club, Summerfield. Dear Mr. President... Are you president of the Jolly Boys Club, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, we've never elected a president. Let's see what it says. <laughs> you are doubtless aware that our national convention has been set for March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in Chicago. No, I didn't know that. This session promises to even top our last conclave held in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, see? Sounds pretty interesting. I've never been to Chicago. Neither have I. It's only recently that... I've never been to New Orleans either. Bessie. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's only recently that we compiled a complete list of clubs in your city, hence this belated invitation. Hmm. Writes a nice letter. Please answer by return mail whether or not you can be our guest, that we can arrange your reservations. Guest, eh? Well, isn't that nice of them? It certainly is. Let's see how the Businessmen's Association can afford that. Well, I guess business has been good all over. <laughs> That's exactly what I need, a trip to Chicago. Bessie? Yes, sir? Wire and tell them the president of the Jolly Boys accepts. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, you said the Jolly Boys didn't have a president. No, it won't take long to hold it in Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> you send that telegram to Chicago and take the rest of the day off, Bessie. After all, it's Washington's birthday. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Well, I think I'll take the day off, too. There's one president to another. I think I owe it to good old George. <laughs> Uh, 
That's right, Chief. I'll see you at the Jolly Boys meeting. Goodbye. Pum, pum, pum for president. Well, that takes care of everything. All five members will be there tonight. Hey, Al, can I go to Chicago with you? Leroy, what would you do in Chicago? Go to the stockyards. <laughs> stockyards? Yeah, we've been studying about them in school. Well, in school is a good place to study them, my boy. Oh, can't I go? I'm sorry, Leroy, but this is strictly for us presidents. Excuse me, Mr. President. Who? Oh, me. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Bertie? You want your blue serge suit clean for the trip? Good idea, Bertie. You better send both pairs of pants. I'll be there three days. Yes. <laughs> better have one of my hats clean, too, Bertie. The gray fuzzy one, Miss Gilfley? No, you better send the black Homburg. It's a little tighter in Chicago's the Windy City. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that sure is a good place for a convention, the Windy City. <laughs> Hello, brother. Hello, Uncle Moore. Hello, Marjorie. How are things going? Oh, fine. I'm practically ready to jump on the train. Anki, I hate to bring this up, but what if they don't elect you president? What? Maybe you're counting your trip before it's hatched, Dunk. <laughs> Nonsense. Who else would the Jolly Boys elect? Judge Hooker and I have been close friends for years. He'll vote for me. I guess he would. And I do a lot of business with Peavy. He has to vote for me. And I'm a good spender in Floyd's Barbershop. And Police Chief Gates knows I have a lot of influence with the mayor. He isn't going to take any chances. That's four votes right there. Five. Five? Yeah, you'll vote for yourself. (laughs) Well, Truman and Dewey did. Why shouldn't I? (laughs) Certainly glad I ran into you on the way down, Judge. Thank you, Gelda. What's the idea of the special meeting tonight? Well, it's always good to get together with you, Horace. Oh? After all, we've been friends for a long time. Close friends. Yes, we have. Well, let's remember that. What? (laughs) Well, here we are, Horace. After you. No, no, you go first, Gelda. Oh, no, after you. Well, if you insist. Hi, you're polite tonight. Well, politeness never lost any friends. Or an election. (laughs) Guess Floyd's limbering up his fingers. Guess so, Judge. Hello, Floyd. Hi, Commit. Floyd, I never heard you play better than you're playing tonight. Yeah? Beautiful. I was trying a new piece, Kitten on the Keys. Hmm? (laughs) Sounds more like a cat on a tin roof to me. What? No, Judge. Well, there's Peavy opening the Cokes. Excuse me, fellas. Why not? No, no, listen. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Yellowstein. <laughs> Can I offer you a Coke? Thanks, but you have one first, Peavy. Hmm, here's one already open. No, you take it, Peavy. You're not behind the soda fountain tonight. I'm not a customer. I'm a friend. How oh, yeah. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to be a good customer tomorrow. Well, you don't say. Yes, sir. Thought I'd drop in and buy a lot of vitamin pills and things, Peavy. Come to think of it, I guess I'm one of your best customers. Well, yeah, come to think of it. Glad you're thinking about it. Well, hello, fellas. Hey, it's the chief. Now he can sing. We're waiting for you, chief. You had to wait. A quartet can't get the first bass without a good bass singer. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Very good, chief. Finest bass voice I've ever heard. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Let's gather around the piano gang and have a song. Yes, I've never felt in better voice. Well, that's not exactly why I call the meeting. Darling, I am growing old. He's not kidding. There's a tavern in the town, in the town. No, no. Peavy, Peavy, not on Washington's birthday. Yeah, yeah. Hey, here's one we always murder. Sweet 16. Great idea, Floyd. There's a solo part for me. Okay, here it comes. Here's your note, Commish. Thanks. I love you as I never loved before. Since first I met you. Come to me for my dream of love. 
Chief. Well, not bad for a policeman. <laughs> By the way, Chief, I've been telling the mayor what a good job you're doing. Singing? Yeah. No, no, at the department, PV. There are big things in store for you down there, Chief, if I have my way. Oh? Hey, Commish, why are you stroking everybody's fur? Did you call this meeting to borrow some money? Yeah. <laughs> No, Floyd, but since we're all together, there is a little business we could take up. Business? Yeah? Like what? Well, has it ever occurred to you fellows that we don't have a president? Why do we need a president? Well, every organization worth its salt has a president, fellas. Of course, I know it's a thankless job, and not many people want to take on the extra work and responsibility, but I think we jolly boys should have a president. I think you're right, Gildy. I've always thought the club meetings were lacking in parliamentary procedure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We lack organization, Pete. How do the rest of you feel about it? It's okay by me. I ain't got nothing against presidents. <laughs> Why don't we have an election next Saturday night at our regular meeting? Why wait that long, Horace? But we're not prepared, Gildy. Who's not prepared? I just happen to have some ballots right here in my pocket. My, my. <laughs> <laughs> Made them out this afternoon, fellas. Here's one for each of us. Say, you're on the ball, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Here's a pencil apiece, fellas. <laughs> Just write in the name of the man of your choice. Great idea, Commish. And just because it is my idea, you fellows don't necessarily have to vote for me. <laughs> Gildy, my compliments. Mm -hmm. You've done some very constructive thinking for us. Well, I'm always thinking of ways to make the club better. Uh, where do we put the balance, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, we might as well drop them here in my hat. <laughs> I've got the election in there anyway. <laughs> hey, uh, Commish, and may the best man win. Thank you, Floyd. Judge, why don't you count the ballots? Very well. Here's one for Chief Gates. Uh, the chief? One for Floyd Munson. Well, what do you know? Uh, <laughs> well, here's one for me. I know there's one for me in there someplace. <laughs> and here's one for Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. You bet. One more vote coming up. I wonder who it'll be for. Well, here's the last ballot. A vote for Peavy. <laughs> Peavy, you didn't vote for yourself, too. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, my goodness, what an election. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a darn minute. Would you like a recipe for a cheese dish that's quick to fix and delicious enough for king or queen? Well, here it is. Pabstet Rabbit. Just melt one package of Pabstet over low heat in a double boiler. Gradually add one quarter of a cup of cream, stirring constantly. Then stir in one quarter of a teaspoonful of dry mustard, one quarter of a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and a dash of cayenne. Pour over crisp toast and serve with broiled bacon. What a lunch. What a supper. What a taste pleaser any time you need something good in a hurry for folks who drop in. But remember, for this recipe, be sure to use Pabstet, that wonderful pasteurized processed cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. For the basic flavor you want in any rabbit is cheddar, and the flavor of Pabstet comes from cheddar cheese of genuine distinction. And whether you use it in rabbits or in sandwiches or salads or chilled and sliced into firm, eye-pleasing wedges, you want the pasteurized processed cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. Get Pabstet tomorrow at your grocer's. Well, the Upstate Association of Businessmen's Clubs sent a letter inviting the president of the Jolly Boys to attend a three-day convention in Chicago. And last night, when the great Gildersleeve called a meeting of the five Jolly Boys to elect a president, he had no idea it would end in a five-way deadlock. Imagine those conceited guys all voting for themselves. I can't tell a little family I only got one vote, my own. Hi, Mr. President. Stand up, Marge. Oh, yes, of course. Good morning, Mr. President. You can sit down, children. 
Is it unanimous, Unc? Well, in a way, my boy. <laughs> Rocco and I had dinner with his parents last night, Unky, and Mr. Thompson wants you to look up some of his prominent friends when you're in Chicago. Uh, I must do that. Sometime when I'm in Chicago. Well, I just couldn't help telling him, Monkey. I wanted to impress the Thompsons. Oh, yeah. I've been using it to good advantage, too. Watch this, Leroy. Yeah. My history teacher's always bragging about where Columbus went, so I told her you were going to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> well, you children may as well know your old uncle may not get to Chicago. What? You weren't elected president, Unky? Well, I got as many votes as anybody. <laughs> But we'll have to do it all over again on Saturday night. Gee, I hope you win, Unky. Thank you, my dear. Morning, Miss Gilsley. Hey, good morning, Bertie. Here's a breakfast fit for a president. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Unk's no president, Bertie. He ain't. Well, I didn't get a big enough majority, Bertie. We've got to vote again Saturday night. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsley, maybe you didn't campaign hard enough. Are you kidding? Uh... <laughs> all right, Leroy. Mr. Gillsleeve, when you're campaigning for office, you've got to get on the good side of the voters. Well, I tried that, Bertie. I passed out compliments to all of them. I even told Chief Gates he had a good singing voice. On Washington's birthday? <laughs> if that didn't work, Mr. Gillsleeve, you ought to haul out the pork barrel. Yeah. Pork barrel? Yes, sir. Invite the members over for one of Bertie's ham dinners. Yeah. Bertie, a ham dinner isn't what they mean by pork barrel. Well, if you want votes from them hungry jolly boys, I know how to get them. Well, Bertie, yes. Uh... Just invite them over for one of Bertie's ham dinners. See, it might work. Might work? Mr. Gilsey, you know all you got to do to get the votes out of them jolly boys? I think I do, Bertie. That's right. Invite them over for one of Bertie's ham dinners. <laughs> uh, uh, I wonder which one's the hungriest. <laughs> Well, a be shave. Not this morning, Floyd. Haircut? No, I... Shampoo? Floyd, the reason I came in... Massage? No, Floyd. Pushy barber. And why'd you come in? I came in to extend you an invitation, Floyd. Yeah? I'd like to invite you and your little wife over for a ham dinner. Me and Lovey? Gosh, we never been to your house to put on the feed bag. Well, that's exactly why... Why I'm inviting you, Floyd. How about tonight? Oh, sorry, Commish. Can't make it tonight. Why not? Judge Hook has invited us over to his house. <laughs> Cool. We ain't going. You're not? Nope. I, uh, I'm having Chief Gates over to my house. <laughs> Everybody has his hand in the pork barrel. <laughs> Hello, PV. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Uh, nothing, P.B. No vitamins? Uh, vitamins? Last evening, you said you'd be in and buy a lot of vitamins. I did? Uh, say, that's right, P.B. Let's see what you've got. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, George, I'll show those other guys. I'll cinch a vote right here. Uh, what are you taking the vitamins for, Mr. Gildersleeve? To cinch a boat? <laughs> I mean for an itchy throat. <laughs> Brother, that was close. I have quite a few brands here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, all those uh, vitamins, Peavy? Yeah, it says so on the label. Now, here's vitamin A, B, B1, C, D. All right, Peavy, I haven't got time for the whole alphabet. I'll take that green bottle there. Very well. That one only has the one vitamin, B1. Uh, now, here's the B complex. Uh, I'll tell you what, Peavy, give me a bottle of each. Exactly. A bottle of each it is. Well... <laughs> Quite a large purchase, eh, P.B.? Yes, runs into several dollars, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good. <laughs> now, P.B., about this election Saturday night, has it occurred to you that if one member threw his vote to a good customer, uh, I mean, a friend, that that person could be elected president? Well, I guess he could. You bet. Now, what do you say, P.B.? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, how'd you like to come over to dinner tonight? <laughs> P.B., not you, too. <laughs> Yes, I know, Bessie. You can have the afternoon off. 
Oh, I wasn't thinking of that, Mr. Gildersleeve. I mean, it's your election night. Don't remind me of it, Bessie. Uh, a free trip to Chicago with all expenses paid. But I've missed the boat, Bessie. Oh, I'm sorry. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, how could you get from here to Chicago in a boat? Yeah. <laughs> Figure of speech, Bessie. I don't stand a chance of being elected tonight. All the jolly boys are out campaigning for themselves. Well, I wouldn't feel too badly. Maybe the water commissioners will have a convention in Chicago sometime. No, the water commissioners always meet at Niagara Falls. <laughs> but that's where people go for their honeymoon. Yes, yes. I wonder why more couples don't go to Chicago. Let's drop the subject, Bessie. <laughs> Chicago is just a pipe dream. Oh, I guess that's why more honeymooners don't go there. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, never mind. Well, I'm a little late for the meeting, but I don't feel much like going tonight anyway. Gildersleeve, you really stepped out of bounds when you wired Chicago you were president of the Jolly Boys. Well, my vote's lost. Might as well give it to Judge Hooker. Let him go to Chicago. He can bring Leroy a picture of the stockyards. The old goat may meet some of his friends there. And he... Hey, here comes the commission now. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, boss. Evening, Gilda. You're a little late. Hmm? Have you figured out who you're going to vote for? Frankly, Judge, I've decided to vote for you. Well, I appreciate your support, Gilda, but it won't be necessary for you to vote at all. It won't? Tell him, Peavy. We've already voted, Mr. Gildersleeve. What? You couldn't vote without me? We had a quorum, Commissioner. That means that most of us were here. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Peavy. Guess who was elected the high muckety muck? Not you, Floyd. Nope. You. Me? Congratulations, Gilday. You received all four votes. Well, thank you, fellas. Chicago, here I come. <laughs> Everybody voted for you, Commission. It was anonymous. <laughs> Lloyd, it was unanimous. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever it was, the good old jolly boys. Real friends, that's what you are, every one of you. The way things turned out, there was only one man for the job. And that was you, Commissioner. Yeah, oh, good old chief. Believe me, fellas, this is a touching tribute. I'll do my best to serve with honor in this high post to which you've elected me. My, my. <laughs> Thank you, Peavy. Of course, I realize the burden of responsibility which attends a position of this kind. There'll be work to do and trips which I'll have to take in the line of duty. But by George, I'll carry the load. I have broad shoulders. That's what we figured. <laughs> Good old Floyd. Uh, by the way, Mr. President. What? Oh, you talking to me, Peavy? I was going to suggest, Mr. President. And now, Peavy, you... you don't have to stand on formalities. I'm just one of the jolly boys. Being president isn't going to change me one bit. I'll never lose that common touch. <laughs> I think what P.D. was about to suggest, Gildy, uh, was that you read this letter. Uh, it came addressed to the president of the Jolly Boys Club. Well, that's the way it goes. You step into office and you're flooded with work. <laughs> yeah, but I don't mind. It seems the letter is from Chicago. Well, Chicago, what do you know? Well, let me see that. I stopped by your office after you left today, Gildy. The letter was there and Bessie gave it to me. Oh? And since it was addressed to the president of the Jolly Boys, we took the liberty of opening it. That was before the election. Oh, sure. Perhaps you'd like to read it. Well, thank you, Judge. Uh, excuse me. Um, to Mr. Throckmorton P. Gillisleeve, president of the Jolly Boys Club. <laughs> I can't imagine how they knew I was going to be elected. <laughs> read it, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, all right, Floyd. <laughs> We're very happy to hear that you will represent your club in Chicago. <laughs> we have made reservations for you at the Croydon Hotel, and for your information, we estimate your convention expenses to be approximately a hundred dollars. Oh, so that's why you elected me. But, Gildy, on George Washington's birthday, you sent a wire saying you held the office. I know. So we have to make an honest man out of our president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for. Okay, fellas, let's pipe the new president aboard. Now, wait a minute. A hundred dollars. For he's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. What a sneaky way to hold an election. That's no way you can deny. Oh, shut up. <laughs>
The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Don't forget, when you want to process cheese food with that real cheddar flavor, get Pabstet at your grocer's. For that rich, satisfying Pabstet flavor comes from fine cheddar cheese of real distinction. You can buy Pabstet, either golden or pimento, in the handy round size packaged. Or save money by getting the economical two-pound loaf. In any package and any way you serve it, Pabstet is delicious. It's the pasteurized processed cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. Get Pabstep tomorrow. Chip in to send the president to a convention. Nineteen seventy-five each. Oh, bye, George. I won't go. <laughs> I don't know how I can get out of it, though. Look out! Leroy, what are you doing? I'm learning to ski. I got piggy skis, and boy, is it fun! Watch me come down this driveway. You be careful, Leroy. You can sprain an ankle that way. Yeah, that's how I got piggy skis. He sprained both of his. Huh? He couldn't go to school. He couldn't. a desperate measure. <laughs> Let's see now. Which hurts more, a sprained ankle or a hundred dollars? <laughs> Leroy, let me try your little skis. Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gloria Holiday, oh. Arthur Q. Bryan, Ken Christie, Earl Ross, and Vic Legrand. That's so. This is Jay Stewart saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard. For there are two kinds, salad mustard, tangy but gentle, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Stay tuned now for the exciting Break the Bank on